It's Yash. <clears throat> so it's not really that God's sleeping, but it's like he's um, dreaming, dreaming that he's sleeping, but not really. See, we can't use words to des describe this. <laughs> Sometimes the people, they try to catch me out. They're like, you say there's no free will, but yet you're also saying that it's important to do things on practical level. Semen retention, good healthy lifestyle habits, clean diet, sattvic diet, good company, good environment, because that all helps calm the mind so that then you can get these spiritual downloads and then you can start to feel <clears throat> serenity more easily and start to wake up to this true nature, which is, you can say, formless. The practical lifestyle habits help, help with that. But then you're saying there's no free will. And now you're saying, like, God's dreaming or God's sleeping, but how can God be sleeping? God's everything. Yeah, how, how else are we supposed to describe this? Uh, in deep sleep, I feel this is the most um, indicative nature <clears throat> of our true nature. There's no you, there's no me, there's no form, there's no life, there's no ambitions, goals, because there's not even a you to, to have that stuff. First, there has to be some individual sense of a self, which we don't lose ever. Even on these higher dimensions, we still retain an individual sense of self because otherwise God doesn't know it's God. We need an individual sense of self to contemplate its source. So, in deep sleep though, that gets um, liquid, li liquidified, liquidified. <laughs> that, that individual sense of self merges with the source, with God or with the absolute for a time. That gives a good, a sense of rest. You can't just be caught up in a dream, you know, all the time. We need to rest, otherwise the dream starts to suffer too much because we believe in it so much, because we're supposed to, supposed to believe in the dream. If you just walk around and pretend you're non-dual and say nothing exists and I know 100% nothing exists, then, well, number one, you can't do that. You're just fooling yourself. And number two, <clears throat> it messes the whole game up. This is why we don't remember a lot of things when we incarnate here into this dimension in this body. We don't remember. We don't remember choosing certain experiences that we were going to have. We don't remember kind of selecting the karmic tray that we want to say, okay, we're going to like burn all that karma out while we're in this life. It's part of the game. We're going to go down there and handle that. We're going to do that. It doesn't happen. You don't discuss these things in a higher dimension the way we're discussing it now. It's different. It's more intuitive. It's more... Things are run more by, you can say, just, yeah, intuition or thought. You don't talk to people or other entities like we do right now. It's more by thought transference. You just, you know, just, it's, it's like, how are you going to explain it? Sometimes uh, <clears throat> some people, if two people are really close and they did a lot of medicine, you're able to, to talk like that. You're able to. To, to communicate via thought transference. It's trippy. And the only reason that looks like a big deal is because those channels aren't normally open while we're in this dimension. Therefore, it looks miraculous. It's fun. It's like, whoa, like lucid dreaming or any kind of telekinetic powers or psychic powers. It like seems it's like a big deal. Or if I could start moving stuff right now, go viral they're like whoa he's like moving stuff on these higher dimensions it means nothing it's like not a big deal it's nothing it's just nothing here it seems like a big deal <laughs> so the the pure the absolute is dreaming itself into some very step down version very limited version of its absoluteness while at the same time programmed itself to try to realize its true nature, which is unlimited. This is the game. The reason people suffer this game, including my previous self, and who knows, maybe if a life situation hits me really hard, if, if my whole you know, family died at this, uh, together and then I, <clears throat> I got into an accident that severed my spine, you think I'm not gonna have some uh, intense uh, temporal suffering experience? think I'm just gonna 
you know, say, no, but really this is just all apparent. This is, this is what a lot of the non-duals are missing. They're missing this uh, level of humility and respect for how real this game is. God's made it like that. You can't, you can't just supersede that and say, oh, I got you, God. Now I'm, I'm one, and, you know, I figured it all out. God, God lets us dream that too. But then we, we um, life will hit us, and then we dream that we're suffering. So dreaming the realization and the suffering, it's uh, still part of the dream. In deep sleep, though, there's none of that. That's why it's almost like God's given us a glimpse of our true nature. There's like nothing there. You don't know. You don't even know you're in deep sleep. So we wouldn't want to be there. Something inside doesn't, for most people, <laughs> some don't seem to mind but most it's like there's a natural sense to want to exist you don't want to lose your individual sense of self especially if you're living in more heavenly realms within yourself heaven and hell don't just exist as external planes that you visit they're also internal planes the same with the yugas dark age and technological age and silver age and golden age though those yugas are potentials inside us also everything everything's inside and outside simultaneously macro and micro if you want to get scientific so what are we talking about God's dreaming us into existence God's dreaming that he's sleeping you see both are happening at the same time in in his dream he's sleeping he's trying to wake up but he's not really dreaming either though he's not really sleeping that space in which this dream dream happens in, it's beyond sleeping or dreaming. It's it's the substratum that allows this dream to take place in. That's not sleeping. That's totally alive. Some people they um, they say, you know, I tried a vita and non-dual and self-inquiry, and now I feel this emptiness, and it's so lonely and boring and, and depressing. I don't want that. I've realized my true nature. I'm enlightened and it sucked. It's because you haven't really realized it. It's the mind commenting on this um, counterfeit sense of emptiness and non-existence. It's the mind like making that in its imagination and then it comments on it and says, oh, this sucks. Because in the nothingness or the non-existence, it's, it's beyond alive. It's, it's so alive that you... What are you going to say? So words fall short a lot of times when we're talking about these things, but yet we continue to talk about them. This is, this is one of the higher parts of the game. At first, at first <clears throat> we have to uh, be in ignorance. And so we're talking about external things and, yo, I'm getting the girl. Yeah, I'm going to make money and I'm going to get this car and this is what I'm doing. And you get all that stuff and then like the consciousness goes to the next level then after that it's like well this is super unsatisfying because it's programmed in us for it to be it's programmed for it to work for a while and be satisfying then it's programmed to be dissatisfying and then it's programmed to seek something that's not ever dissatisfying that's always you can say it never <clears throat> it never gets boring or old it's always fresh and that's our true nature so then the consciousness instead of seeking so much uh, externally it starts to go inside and it's um it starts to realize, you can say, this, this, this formless nature that, that everything is that we get to taste when we're in deep sleep. We never lose what we gain in consciousness. This is some, some comments and some questions are like, so, so what? We're going to become awake and then go back to being asleep? And No, no. Creation does because there's new souls, there's new beings coming in all the time. But you don't wake up to your true nature, which is a process, by the way, and you never totally wake up to your true nature. You keep waking up more and more and more and more. Isn't that a good deal? So that continues, and you don't lose that. Now, can you fall backwards, maybe forget a little bit? Yeah, but so what? You bounce right back. It's not a big deal. Consciousness doesn't lose anything it gains. You can't lose what you gain in consciousness. That's good news, isn't it? So you relax and you keep going. Don't worry. You're not going to like fall back into darkness. So sometimes you hear about these uh, fallen angels. They say, well, but they were, they were super enlightened. And then uh, he got involved with this uh, girl and he like took 
advantage of her and lost all his power. Or there's been yogis who have powers and then they try to demonstrate their powers. They like the attention they get because here it's, uh, it's very exclusive. Not a lot of people have powers. It's like if you, if you drove, if I drove a Lamborghini in India, in the village, I'd like to do that actually, that'd be fun. Me and my Indian friend be sporting in a Lamborghini. You know how much attention we get? So it gets seductive, this attention. So these so-called high-level yogis, they still had the, the karma was still there. The ego was still there as a, as something that was, was still addicted to attention. It wanted attention. So then it loses or it wants, it still had some sexual karma. So then God, the life, life sent uh, <clears throat> a girl that could really, <laughs> there's, there's a, some of these guys, you, <clears throat> the alpha male, yeah, I'm alpha male, nobody can touch me. Yeah, life will create a girl that will just knock you down, man. So stay humble. Um, life will send some situation to ha help uproot this karma that <clears throat> some of these advanced yogis have, these advanced beings have, and they don't know it. You don't know it until life brings you a situation and then it exposes it. That's why like, you, can't, you can't ever just say like, yeah, I got it. I mean, you can, but, but um, you, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna find out differently. Don't get complacent, stay humble. Um, so God's, God's dreaming this whole show, this whole show of evolution. So, so the point of that Again, it's paradoxical. You play your part as good as you can. Play, you, you can't not do that anyway. But at the same time, something has to, it feels like you're playing the part and you're doing, you know, say, okay, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm gonna go be of service over here with this person tomorrow and uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna do the right thing. Okay, I'm gonna do my meditation today. Yeah, it looks like we're making a choice to do that. Cooperate with that. Don't just you know, don't let the mind come in and say, no, but I'm really, there's nobody here to make a choice. Yeah, there, that's also true. But if you focus too much on that, then you become a non-dual parrot, you see? So that's the trap. So yes, everything's happening like it, like I can't control anything, but yet it, there's a damn strong appearance that like I'm making decisions and I need to flow with that too. Enjoy, it feels good. It feels good. Like, yeah, I made a decision to go do this and that and it worked out really good. Cool, even though I didn't make it. Cool, both are cool. All right, this was kind of just a <clears throat> spontaneous talk. I'm, I'm doing in a, in a new spot, you see? There's no intruders. All right, for now, I'll see you soon.